Hello and welcome to Daily Reflection with Anil Arana. Today is the 9th of April 2018 and we're going to reflect on Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now most people who say the rosary, and many who don't, know the prayers begin with the words, Hail Mary, full of grace. Yet, the words the angel says are a little different. He doesn't address Mary by name, saying instead, Hail, full of grace, or greetings, favored one and variations of the same, and in doing so, effectively names her full of grace. Anyone familiar with scripture would know that people in the Bible are given names describing their character. Jacob, for instance, means he grabs the heel, and it was changed by God to Israel, which means he who prevails with God. As there was a change in character, there is also a change in the name. Similarly, Abram means great father, and it was changed by God to Abraham, meaning father of many. So when the angel is addressing Mary as full of grace or favored one, he is actually doing something very important. He is stating who she is, and that is not something that necessarily follows from that moment on, as in the case of Abraham and Israel, but something that has always been the case and always will be the case. Then the angel says, the Lord is with you. Once again, these are words that anyone familiar with scripture will instantly identify as being used by God whenever he chooses somebody to do something important for him. We find him saying this to Jacob in a dream as he slept in the desert on the way to Haran. He says the same thing to Moses from the burning bush when he assigns him to set his people free from bondage to the Egyptians. Ditto to Jeremiah, to Gideon, and every other hero in the Bible. Jesus uses these words too after he commissions his apostles to make disciples of all nations, promising, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age. That is, if you need reminding, a commission given to us as well, and to remind us of this commission in every Eucharistic service, the priest says, the Lord is with you. I say the same to you, and yet another reminder, the Lord is with you.